Thank you for joining us for a series of technical assistance videos introducing potential applicants to the U.S. Department of Labor Employment and Training Administration's Funding Opportunity Announcement, the Workforce Opportunity for Rural Communities, referenced here as DOL, ETA, FOA, and WORK. In this video, I'll be outlining Section 5, Application Review Information of the WORK FOA. This video provides a detailed description of the work scoring criteria and how applicants may achieve maximum points. So let's get started. For the work initiative, the DOL has instituted a review procedure assessing the technical merit of the proposal and provide for an objective review of submitted applications. The application review criteria outlined here are based on information described in the project budget and project narrative sections of the FOA. The application review criterion is comprised of five sections listed here totaling 100 possible points. Statement of need and strategic alignment, project description, expected project results and sustainability, organizational, administrative, and fiscal capacity, budget and budget narrative. I'll describe each section and identify the information needed to realize the highest possible score. The project design must include these elements. Describe all planned activities and their implementation. Describe how planned activities address the needs and challenges described in the statement of need. Describe how planned activities meet the stated goal of the work initiative. Describe how planned activities address the skills gap in the proposed areas of meeting the employer's documented needs and overcoming challenges to serve the target population. Ensure project activities are represented in the project timeline. This is a required separate attachment. Ensure project activities are described in the budget narrative. Explain strategies in place to keep activities on track and achieve desired outcomes and results. Describe how the project will support eligible individuals impacted by substance abuse disorders. Major emphasis will be placed on the following components. Approach for addressing the identified needs of the community, employers, job seekers, and workers. Addressing the work initiative's primary goal and key elements. Feasibility and appropriateness of the project timeline and budget for the completion of proposed scope of work. The statement of need is the foundation of the application and must clearly explain the reason for the proposed project. It must also support the grant initiative's goal of creating economic prosperity and gainful employment opportunities for eligible residents within the DRA or ARC impacted areas so they may remain and thrive in these communities. The statement of need must describe the need for assistance, the nature and scope of challenges to overcome, and the consequences of not addressing the needs. The needs described must align with the target population served. There are five scored elements. 1. Description of community or communities and needs is worth three points. For this section, the applicant must describe the region to be served by the project, including the required supporting documentation used to identify the region, and the region's economic and workforce challenges, the consequences of not addressing those challenges, and the required documentation identifying named challenges, including the region's unemployment rate. Two, demonstration of inclusion within an opportunity zone, or OZ, is worth two points. To be awarded these points, the applicant must identify at least one census tract within the service area that is classified as an OZ, as designated under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Acts. While this is not a requirement, applicants that propose to provide services to an OZ will receive the two points. Three, description of workforce needs is worth five points. The applicant must describe the workforce needs of at least one identified employer and the specific skills gap to be addressed by the proposed project. A letter from at least one employer describing the specific skills training needed for anticipated and future job placement is required. Four, Describing the target population is worth four points. For the points to be fully awarded, the applicant must identify the population their proposed project intends to serve through this grant. This could include new entrants to the workforce, incumbent workers, and dislocated workers. The proposal must also discuss why this population was selected and how the applicant plans to recruit this segment. Five, alignment with strategic plans is worth four points. We'll go into more detail on this one. 
To be awarded the four points for this section, applicants must demonstrate that their proposed project aligns with existing economic and workforce development priorities and strategies in the area covered by the grant. Applicants must address how their proposed plan aligns with each of the following four plans. A local or regional plan. For purposes of this FOA, DOL has broadly defined a local or regional plan. Any plan published or produced by a state, local, or regional commission, including a CEDS plan or any other regional coalition or organization that set out appropriate economic and employment goals for the target area the applicant proposes to serve. DRA or ARC Federal Plan known as Regional Development Plan 3. DRA or ARC State Plan. Your state's Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act State Plan with 2018 to 2020 modification. Applicants must provide evidence of alignment with each of the four plans and clearly demonstrate that the plan applies to the geographic area the project proposes to serve. Applicants must also state the relevant goals, components, description of needs, or action items of each plan the proposed project intends to address or support. Finally, applicants must demonstrate how their project and its outputs address, support, or further the identified portion of each plan. Applicants must cite the relevant sections and include a verifiable reference. Applicants may choose to attach relevant passages of each identified plan to their proposal. The project description must clearly describe how the design of the proposed project addresses the needs identified in the Statement of Need along with how it promotes the goals of the work initiative to create economic prosperity and gainful employment opportunities for eligible residents in impacted DRA or ARC regions. Additionally, the project description must define the partnerships that will ensure the success of the efforts. The project description section is comprised of the project design worth 20 points and the project partners worth 10 points for a combined 30 points. The project design must meet the requirements established in Section 4.B.3 of the FOA. It must describe a coherent and feasible approach for successfully addressing the identified needs of the community, employers, job seekers, and workers. The project design must reflect the goals and elements of the work initiative, the project timeline, and budget items for the completion of the proposed scope of work. The project design must Describe all planned activities and their implementation. Describe how the planned activities address the needs and challenges described in the Statement of Need. Describe how planned activities meet the stated goal of the work initiative. Describe how planned activities address the skills gap in the proposed area, meet employers' documented needs, and overcome challenges to serve the target population. Ensure project activities are represented in the project timeline. This is required as a separate attachment. Ensure project activities are described in the budget narrative. Explain strategies in place to keep activities on track and achieve desired outcomes and results. Describe how the project will support eligible individuals impacted by substance abuse disorder. The project partnership portion of the narrative must demonstrate coordinated workforce strategies among stakeholders to develop, maintain, and expand partnerships that build and sustain capacity, maximize available resources, and establish community-based approaches for addressing workforce challenges and industry needs in the DRA or ARC regions. Additionally, at least two letters of engagement from employer and or industry partners in the area covered by the grant must be attached to the application. These letters must attest to the specific workforce need that would be addressed by the proposed project. Applications that do not include any letters from employers will not receive full points for this section. In addition to the two required employer and or industry partners, a coalition of partners should be considered. These partners may include, but are not limited to, the following organizations. Local and regional employer and industry networks, local economic development organizations, local governments, regional planning organizations, labor unions, state and local workforce agencies, institutions of higher education or other job training and adult education providers, supportive and human services providers, or other relevant economic and workforce development partners. 
Major emphasis will be placed on the strength or value of the identified and or planned partnerships through proposed roles and responsibilities, the shared resources and programmatic alignment, and supporting documentation. The expected results and sustainability portion of the application must clearly state expected project results that are specific, measurable, achievable, and reasonable according to the project design and timeline. This section is worth 30 points. Project results must include short and medium term results that include outputs and outcomes achieved by the end of the grant period. Long-term benefits that include outcomes expected five or more years at the end of the grant period to demonstrate sustainability. All project results must clearly align with the needs, gaps, or challenges identified in the statement of need and the activities identified in the project description. Outputs and outcomes achieved by the end of the grant period must include the number of participants obtaining new or improved employment opportunities. Short and medium term results must include both outputs and outcomes. In terms of outputs or outcomes, consider this. Short and medium term outputs include activities and participants served. Consider short and medium term outputs achieved as delivered products, services, trainings, or participants served during the grant life cycle. For example, a short term output of your project would be the development of a new apprenticeship program. An example of a medium-term output corresponding to the short-term output would be the number of participants served through the newly established apprenticeship program. Outcomes are the measurable results of the project outputs. The outcomes should correspond to the short and medium-term outputs and achieved by the end of the grant cycle. The short and medium-term outcomes should be consistent with the identified project outputs. Consider short and medium term outputs as delivered products, services, trainings, or participants served during the grant life cycle. An example of a short term outcome consistent with the proposed short term output would be 100 trainees receiving an industry certification or being placed in an on the job training program. A medium term outcome should correspond to the medium term output. An example of a medium term outcome would be 100 participants receiving new or improved employment opportunities, or trainees with improved skills or basic education knowledge. Sustainability and long-term impact are important to the work initiative. The applicant must clearly identify the anticipated long-term benefits for the participants, employers, and communities served by the grant, explaining how the activities and investments made under the grant continue to benefit the workforce and the economy five years after the end of the project. The applicant must also explain the plan to sustain the work of the project after grant funding ends. Reliance on additional grant funding is not considered sufficient under this section. The organizational, administrative, and fiscal capacity sections consist of two sections, worth 10 points. To receive the full five points for the financial and management documentation section, applicants must submit the Financial System Assessment Form located on pages 42 to 44 of the FOA, the applicant's most recent audited financial report, or an IRS Form 990. To receive the full five points for administrative capacity, applicants must submit staff resumes or job descriptions that are relevant to the organizational management for grants of this type that demonstrate the ability to carry out the proposed project effectively. The applicant must demonstrate that the items included in the budget are consistent with the project narrative. The applicant must complete the SF-424A budget information form. The budget narrative must provide a description of the cost associated with each line item on the SF-424A. It must separate the primary cost components of each line item, which when added together provide the line item total. It must also provide the basis for the cost and the function or use of particular items. Note that the SF-424 the SF-424A and budget narrative must include the entire federal grant amount requested, not just one year. Do not show leverage resources on the SF-424 and SF-424A. In the budget narrative, describe any leverage resources provided to support the grant activities. Leverage resources are considered all resources, both cash and in-kind, in excess of this award. To be awarded the full 12 points, applicants must describe in detail 
how all items in the project budget, including personnel, equipment, and capital improvements, align with the budget narrative. That brings us to the end of our examination and breakdown of Section 5 of the work FOA. Thank you for joining us. We will be providing more informational videos on various sections of the work FOA. But in the meantime, please contact a member of the DRA workforce team with any questions or to request additional information.